Welcome back to Arcade Spirits. In the last episode, we got invited to go on an outing, a strange, mysterious outing, to uh, what turned out to be a very haunted-looking house to go find some new arcade games for the arcade. But this guy, Hamza, is maybe going to give us some? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway... <clears throat> What was his voice? I just did it a minute ago. It was... it was... It was needless to say. The estate has fallen on hard times ever since. In this year it shall be torn down to make way for condominiums. But not before we have our say. Friends, those games that Donna Michaels cherished still lurk one floor below. Ready to be rescued from such a terrible fate. It is our moral imperative to do so. All right. I have paid the estate owners a princely sum for the entire lot. Now, Hamza parcels them out to you. By all means, browse the collection. See which pieces sing out to you. All right, let's go. On the far table, you shall find refreshments, grapes, sparkling wine, and delicacies from my travels. Mingle, cavort. And we shall begin the auction in one hour's time. Sounds good to me. Indeed, a lavishly arranged table that probably cost more than any single arcade game to put together is descended upon by the invitees soon after. I feel like I'm attending some ancient Roman celebration of debauchery and gluttony, not an arcade raid. Or an arcade auction. Or whatever. Donna Michaels. I knew it. I should have recognized Donna when we pulled in, but it was raining too hard. Who? You've never heard of Donna Michaels? She was the hottest musical act of 1980X. Naomi, I was born in 1990X. Oh, I was. I'm totally plugging my phone into the van stereo so we can blast Girls Just Want to Play Games all the way home. But... First, I'm going to go check out the cabinets in her arcade. I'm not really into mingling. Later. She dashes off with all speed, heading for the stairs leading below. Hmm. Suppose I should go network a bit. Hamza's events always do, always draw an interesting crowd of rival arcade owners. Heading for the foodstuffs, Gavin arranges himself a plate so he has an excuse to hang around and eavesdrop on the other collectors. Leaving me to, uh, do stuff? Now I see why I was bored at these events. Gavlin, Gavin schmoozes, Naomi analyzes finds, and Francine's already napping in a chair. I've got nothing to do. Well, when in doubt, find someone who knows what they're doing and stick to them like glue. Let's go hang out with Naomi. Uh, I'm not a huge schmooze person either. I'm not really interested in the arcade version of Game of Thrones going on up here. Gavin can handle these guys. Me, I want to see this legendary arcade Hamza was talking up. So I head downstairs to join Naomi. Whoa. Is this a private collection or a full-fledged arcade? I was expecting a handful of games and a pool table or something, but this? This is easily three times larger than the Funplex itself. Even coated in dust and disrepair, it's awe-inspiring. Also, it's hard to find anyone in this maze of tightly packed games. Invitees are browsing the available stock to decide what's worth bidding on, making it crowded as well. But eventually, I locate Naomi, practically cuddling a narrow-looking TMNT machine. Turtles in Time is... I've heard very good things about the arcade version of Turtles in Time. Oh... Emmy, look! A two-player variant of TMNT! These were only released in the Oceania region! Such a rare find! Wait, wasn't that game originally four-player? Why would anyone want a version with only two joysticks? Well, because... Because... I mean, it's rare! It's a find! And it's less fun? Not the point. Anyway, it's hard to find one of these, two-player or four-player. I'd love to have it for the arcade, 
I'd love to have that, and this one, and this one, and... Oh, if only I could take all these home with me. I mean, some have water damage, others likely have busted CRTs and controls, they all need work, but... I recall the game she was working on when I first met her. Extensive repairs needed just to make it playable. So, not only would you have to bid and win the game, but you'd have hours of work and plenty of spare parts to purchase ahead of you? I know, isn't it great? Okay, is there a nice way to say this? Um... I know you love restoring these games, but... You really love bringing a broken old game back to working order, huh? Yeah! Absolutely! These games deserve to shine as they once did ages ago. If I can turn back the clock and let them be what they truly can be, let people play them as they were in their prime, well, there's no greater feeling. And you enjoy the challenge of restoration, too. Repairing hardware, replacing damaged art, the problem solving of broken monitors. You know me so well, Emmy. Exactly! And all of that is admirable. I really love how happy these projects make you, Naomi. But, there's a flip side. How much time does it take to restore a game? Hmm. I'd say, if it's in good shape, maybe a few hours. If it's really a wreck and needs extra love, a few days. Maybe weeks if parts are on back order. Okay. Now think of the games we currently have, and how many still need work, or break down frequently. Can you take on a bunch of new projects? Well... Uh... I could... Make the time. Work late, right? Even a girl with bottomless energy has her limits. Naomi sighs, frustration building. <sighs> it's not fair. It's not fair? I know... I mean, I'm not dense. I know there's only so much we can realistically do so many projects I can actually take on. But I, I wish I could do more. I wish we could do more. The Funplex has never really been a success. Even before I came on board, it was always struggling to stay afloat. I joined it because so few arcades still have the games I love. But I can't turn our situation around, can I? No matter how hard I try. That's not what I'm saying. This is my first job. Part of me is hoping it'll be my last job, too. That I can happily spend all my days tinkering with these wonderful games. Every kid says they want to be a fireman or an astronaut or a robot cop or something. But nobody actually ends up doing that. Except me. I wanted to fix up arcade games, and that's what I'm doing. It's all I ever wanted to do. So... When I see all these old, broken games, I just want to show them the love I can give. I could be happy working on them for the rest of my life. Wow. That's dedication. And really? You went straight from school to an arcade job? I mean, I've meandered from job to job, never really sure what I wanted. That's normal, right? Yeah! Oh, definitely. I'm the oddball here. It's funny, I followed my heart and found just what I wanted, what I needed, and now, well, now I'm scared someday it'll all come to an end. The Funplex will close. And if the Funplex goes under, I, I really don't know what I'm going to do. All I ever wanted was to work in an arcade, and I'm literally living my dream. Okay, now I feel bad for bringing d down her day. Hey, look, you never know, right? Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll find a game down here that brings in thundering herds of players. Right. It's a slim hope, and we both know it. But Naomi clings to it immediately, eagerly. My low bank balance and grumbling stomach mean I need to cling to that hope as well. I made my choice. Now I need to make that choice work. Hmm. We just need to find the right game. Something nobody's played in a long time. Something that'll tug at the nostalgia strings. It's difficult finding the right balance, especially in the year 20XX. A lot of these games are on life support. Borrowed time. 
But they can be repaired, right? Well, yeah, for now. But CRTs, the monitors that power these old games, before LCDs and now 3D flats started replacing them, they're in short supply. Nobody makes them anymore. I mean, who buys a tube-based TV anymore? Nobody. It's all high definition and that weird 3D projection tech which looks awful. Nobody appreciates a good CRT anymore. Aren't high-def displays way cheaper though? I've seen some old games running them in old other arcades. They're wrong is what they are. These games weren't designed for pixel-perfect flat panels, they're designed for fuzzy tubes. The picture looks weird on LCD. Actually, that is true. The A lot of, like, 80s and 90s, early 90s era games were designed uh, with the understanding that they'd be played on CRT. So the pixel art looks off on modern screens because it was in, it was designed with that fuzziness involved. There's a lot of like I think it's Mario and uh, Legend of Zelda picks early Mario and Legend of Zelda where a lot of the enemies don't look like how they were designed to look anymore because the pixels aren't as as fuzzy in high definition. I don't know, I just think it's neat. I don't fully understand because I was, as mentioned, I was not born in the 80s or early 90s, but it's cool. I like the idea of it, even if I don't have first-hand experience with it. Even two weeks in, I'm still fuzzy myself on a lot of this stuff. Oh, hey, look at that. But I grew up in the internet age. I'm silicon literate. I got up opinions. Uh... How about we strip some for parts? That feels awful. But... That way we at least can continue using the CRTs that you love? So, it's a problem of having spare parts on hand long term. Short of building our own factory for cranking out TV tubes, there's a temporary fix. Buy some cheap, common games and use them as organ donors. Ugh. And ruin a classic? Cheap and common, Naomi. Not some rare find, but one that's still readily available. We can even keep the cabinet itself so it can be restored later if need be. Point is, mixing and matching the guts will keep more fragile games afloat. Makes sense. Well, I mean... Okay, yeah, that does make sense. And I bet I could sell Gavin on that idea, too. We'd need more rental storage, but it'd mean less ordering parts and less downtime. Okay, I'll see if there's anything down here nobody would want and nobody would need. Thank you. You know, I'm glad you're here with us at the Funplex. Whether you take my side or Gavin's side, it's just nice to have someone who cares about games around, having games around. Ashley's fun, but she's way more into cosplaying than gaming. But it's kind of odd, you know? What? Feeling like I'm not alone. Ow. I'm ending this episode here. Because ow. Bye-bye. <laughs>